G'day yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, August the 4th, 2021 and this is video number 119. So it's been over a week since I uploaded my last podcast. So <laughs> there's been a lot going on and I want to catch you up on a few things, uh, both in the personal as well as my yarny adventures. So I have some finished objects, a work in progress, and a little bit of happy mail to show this uh, particular podcast and to talk to you about what I've been up to for the week. I'll add that at the end of the video. So for those of you who are uh, interested in all of the yarny goodness, it'll be at the front of the <laughs> of this podcast. So uh, yeah, I uh, wanna just welcome anyone who is new to the channel and my name is Gary. I'm the host of Urban Yarn. I've set this channel up to talk about all of my yarny adventures that is in knit, crochet. I do dabble a little bit in hand dyeing of yarn, but nothing on a huge scale. And I talk about my acquisition. So that's where I buy my yarn from and also where I buy the tools of my craft. So either online or in store, I'll flag things that I see that might be of a sale and of interest to uh, my fiber friends. So if that kind of thing is of interest to you, please stick around. And to my fiber friends returning, I wanna say welcome back. Thank you for uh, all the comments in the last video. It was so great reading them. As always, uh, I, I love the communications and the community here. Uh, connecting is such a valuable thing for me. So that's why I, sometimes uh, consider this whole endeavor part of like joining in and connecting with people as part of the main aspect of why I do the podcast. So yay, uh, let's get stuck into some of the finished work. So as I mentioned in my last podcast, I had done one sock and I have completed the second sock. So here we have the heels and the toes and the cuffs are all done. And if I remember, I did promise I'd do a bit of a dance in my socks. So if I can manage to add a film clip here, I will with me wearing the socks so that you can see them on feet rather than just flat, uh, flat tubes like this. So I'll add that in here. There's my little dance in my new socks, my very first that I knitted, and these would not have happened if it weren't for the help from a friend, Melinda, who lives in Ontario, Canada. So thank you, Melinda, for gifting me these wonderful tubes and the sock kit to make these socks. So inside of the happy mail that Melinda sent me was this three easy step instruction pamphlet uh, of showing how the pattern to, to create these socks, uh, what to do with putting a lifeline, how to create the heels, toes, and the cuffs, and yeah, also where to in, uh, make the incisions for either the after heel or to cut the, the sock tube to the desired length that I would want my socks to be. So it was all very, very, well-informed information, very clear to read. I'm not too sure whether this pattern is available still or whether you have to pay for it or if it's free. So I'm just gonna add in the description box the email address, which is down below in uh, this pamphlet, as well as uh, the person who created it. So yeah, I'll give them credit. And if you can reach out, if you're interested to find out whether it's still available, you'll have the contact information. It was a pattern that was uh, published in 2014. So it's been around for some time. So lovely choice of color here. I do love green. So Melinda, you have chosen wisely. I would have been happy with anything really, but this was a very, very nice choice for me. And the tubes were cranked out of this sock yarn here, which is the Sundance 
in the collection Soulful Stripes. It is a superwash and nylon blend in the colorway green. I love the way that it came out in this kind of ferrule patterning. Now this is all self-striping, so it all comes in the ball with all these colors already designated. So it's just a knitted tube that has all the colors already on it. So the lovely heels, toes, and cuffs here are in the contrasting color, and that I used in Drops, their Fable collection. I think it's the uni Unicolor, yeah, Unicolor. And this is also a fingering weight yarn, and the color weigh is 300, no name, just a number. The content of it is a wool and polyamide blend, so nice durable sock yarns for wearing on your feet. So yeah, what, can, what else can I tell you? So this um, here that I'm holding is the <laughs> DPNs that I used. Uh, they are bamboo three millimeter DPNs, and that's what I use for all three of the steps to make the sock. And a little cutting tool was used that was also provided by Melinda in her kit, and some th a thread which was dental floss, which was a nice, I'm going to say waxy type of plastic, and it was really easy to see the uh, contrast of where the lifeline was as opposed to the sock yarn. So when you're cutting, you don't want to be cutting the lifeline or another yarn that uh, is maybe a row up uh, mistakenly. So your incision is pretty key to where you are making the afterthought heel or cutting away the bits that you don't need from the tube. So this is what I had left just to give you an idea of the tube, what was left over. I'm not too sure whether this this one here could probably make a shorty if I use the contrasting heel, toes and cuff again. And this one here, I might need to knit up a little bit more because I did have a small amount of the yarn that I pulled back to get the pattern at the same starting point so that um, both my socks were in unison. So yeah, I, um, I will probably have to knit back and see whether I can make a second sock out of this bit here. But yeah, later down the way, I would have to say that uh, the fiddly bits of doing each of the steps, it it's something that I probably won't go back to regularly, but every once in a while, just to practice on the steps that are outlined in the pattern, I probably will try a sock, pair, pair of socks, every once in a while, so don't forget it. And thank you so much for that, Melinda. Great, great assets for me to learn all those techniques because when I'm reading another pattern that may have sticking or cutting or uh, putting a, a safety line in, I will be fine with figuring all of that out. Just got a message there, so I'll just get rid of that. Now, moving right along, I have another finished object to share with you. This one is also knitted and it is my Stephen West Vertice Unite shawl. Oops, <laughs> make sure that I grab that. And absolutely had so much fun with this. I have a, I have a, a bit of a movie and some photos that hubby took of me wearing it. So I'll insert it so you can see all the colors and I'll come back and tell you about the yarn that I used. I had so much fun knitting up the Vertices Unite. There are six sections that you knit in stages and knit together as you go. And in each section, there are choices of colors that blend or that have a great contrast. I've seen many, many examples of this shawl using different colors and whether they choose colors that are more unified and monochromatic just a beautiful harmony of the vertices when they unite 
and how it works up. So mine's more a little graphic. So I've chosen stronger colors in each of the panels so that I've got some striping. I've got some really loud um, pops of color here and there. Uh, so yeah, I had a lot of fun choosing the colors. Now, the reason why I am doing the, uh, that I'd done the Versus Unite was for a knit along and the folks down at uh, Fiber Hustle, both Chip and Erin. Hi, hi guys, how you doing? Uh, they had uh, put this into action, I believe it was the start of July, and it's running all the way up until the 7th of August. So there's only a few more days left. So I was quite, I squeezed it in with only three days remaining, but uh, it was all in, I guess, honor of Chip's birthday, which is happening in early August and the knit along needed to be concluded before the birthday because Aaron is hosting it and he's knitting up a Vertices Unite for Chip's birthday. So happy birthday, Chip. And with that, I'll talk to you about like the yarn that I chose and talk about the colors and combination choices that I had made for my Vertices Unite. I'm gonna take this off because it's really, really hot. Uh, so right now, we are in summer here in Vancouver and each day so far has been, I'm going to say for the last week to 10 days, has been in the 30s uh, or high 20s and the apartment has cooked up quite a lovely temperature. <laughs> so we'll start down this end, which is section one. And section one chooses color A and B. So my color A is Hawthorne, which is a fingering weight from Knit Picks or Weed Crochet. And it is in the colorway called Slate. It's kettle dyed yarn, so it has a nice variance of the gray tones. The second color, which is color B, is the yarn that I purchased from Willow Yarns. And it is a Berger, Berger de France. Uh, yarn, it's the name of it. I'm sorry if I butchered that because it is a French yarn and it is in the colorway Melon. It's also fingering weight. And then in section two, which is this part here, I have chosen two yarns. So my color C is in, uh, I have to just check that because I sometimes mix up these. Color C is a hand dyed yarn that I had made in the kitchen from a dye supplier bear yarn that was that I had purchased and I had done it in a colorway uh, from the Hunger Games I was inspired to create the Master of Ceremonies which is a blue gray and a little bit of purple in the in the color and that features a little uh, later down the way in a different section I think section four on its own so I'll show you that and I paired it with a knit crate yarn, which was generously gifted to me by Tracy Fowler. So thank you, Tracy, for that beautiful purple yarn. It is the Vidalana blend of linen, wool, and I believe there was some cotton in there as well. And it was in the colorway called Midsummer Rose. Absolutely stunning yarn. And then we move into section three, which is this one here. This is like the hub, the hub color, uh, where all of the other bits and pieces kind of unite. And I use two yarns in this one. Although the pattern does just call for one yarn, I thought that I needed to make it a little bit more striking as it was the main featured color in the, in the shawl. So I had chosen my color E, which was a hand dyed yarn and it was also inspired by the Hunger Games that I cooked up in the kitchen called Girl on Fire. And I paired it with a Willow Yarns and the collection is called Stream in the colorway Pomegranate. So I just did a row of, um, row or two? Two rows and switched the color. So uh, wrong side, right side, then switched my color, wrong side, right side. So there's two rows of knitting there of each of the colors. Then we come back to the Master of Ceremonies in section four here on its own. Really love that. And then in section five, we have the A, which was the Hawthorne 
in the slate gray and then I believe I said it was the the D the D color striping which is the Vitalana Midsummer Rose color and the last one is the Berger de France in the melon color. My I caught bind off is in the Hawthorne gray because I thought that that was unifying and neutral for the whole of the garment. So it worked well in all of the pieces that goes around. Yeah. So I had so much fun with that. And that's going to be one that I'll wear definitely in autumn uh, or the fall when we have cooler weather. Next up, I want to share with you a work in progress. And this came about by a pattern that I had won being in amongst a live. And that live was hosted by Reggie at J Hook Crochet. Now, Reggie was hosting a few lives over the summer. This one happened to be a summer party and she was posing questions to the live chat and we were answering the questions and the random comment picker would pick a number and then that number landed on me. So I was gifted a wonderful pattern by, uh, by Reggie and the pattern designer is David Browning. Hi David! And you may know that he has a channel here on YouTube as well called The Bearded Yarn Dudes. And so I think I might have done something incorrect with this pattern. But I am going to think about making a slight uh, addition to it so that it gets back on track. But I wanted to just show you where I'm at with it. And this yarn is very difficult to frog. I did try frogging after I discovered that it was uh, maybe miscalculating, but this is the Alicia shawl. Absolutely wonderful. I'll talk to you about the yarn in a moment, but as you can tell, it's not a quick growing triangular shape. It, it, it is very slow growing. And right now I've, I've already come up to five feet and the depth of the, the, the tip of the, um, the growth is, is quite shallow. I'm not saying that I don't like it narrow and longer because for me, that's what I like to base a lot of my shawls on so that they're not so deep, but, um, Ooh, it's my hair. So far I have, I have half of it, I think and I am blending the yarns as well as I go through. So that's what I have so far. And the two yarns that I'm blending, I've started the blend around where that yellow marker is. So I have, or where this light, where this thread is actually. So I've got like around, I'm gonna say 10 rows of blending and I probably have another 10 rows of blending still to go. And then I'll be into the new color that I'm adding into the into the shawl. So really, really nice eyelets on the bias here. Absolutely nice pattern, David. Love it so much. So what I'm using for the yarn in the first part of the shawl is this yarn here from Michaels, and it's the their Loops and Threads in store brand. The collection is called Eco Calm Stripes. The colorway is called Mermaid and it is a combination of all different fibers. So we have 60 recycled polyester, 15 regular polyester, 15 acrylic and 10% wool. It's a hand wash, lay flat to dry yarn and they suggest to use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is what I'm using. I'm using my 5.5 millimeter Susan Bates. Uh, what else can I tell you about this yarn? Uh, it's made in China and I got it on sale, but in Canada, the regular price is $11.99. I'm not sure whether they still have this yarn available. It might've just been for the summer period, spring, summer period, because I don't seem to see it anymore when I go for visits in the Michael store. Uh, but this is how it works up. So it's the mermaid colorway. And I believe I have maybe 
mm, maybe about four more rows of the mermaid left and then it will be finished. And I am pairing it now, fading into a new colorway, which is the Green Waves colorway in the same collection. So that is the Eco Calm Stripes. And it's blending in really, really consistently with the color of the mermaid. So that's, that's it there. And what I was thinking of doing is reaching a certain point where I'm going to start decreasing. Uh, so you see the, the tip of it there is quite shallow. It's not, it's not a, a long uh, triangle uh, piece. Like it's not a isosceles triangle. I think that's what they call it. Uh, but I'm going to get uh, to a certain stage where I probably choose to decrease to create the second arm of the triangle as long as as this arm here uh, only because I think with the because it's not like a equilateral triangle it's not it doesn't have the same style of symmetry I don't know whether that's the right description that I'm giving you but um, yeah it needs probably another arm to come around so I probably make a small alteration to the pattern so that I can balance it up with an arm going off onto the other side yeah and it'll be in the it'll be in the waves green color this one here so really, really enjoying the pattern. This yarn is really nice to work with. Uh, it is, it has a lot of bounce in it. Uh, it is a roving style yarn. So, and it has quite a fuzzy halo to it. I don't know whether you can see that, but it is fuzzy to touch and very, very silky. You can feel a little bit of the wool in it uh, as it has 10% wool. So you, again, if you have an adverse kind of skin reaction to wool, this may not be the yarn for you, but absolutely love the design and the stitch work in the pattern. Next up is some happy mail that I received from the UK. Now, this person that sent me the happy mail, she has a tag name here on YouTube called Claptrap. Hi Claptrap! And I was pleasantly surprised with the yarn choice that she had made. I am always really thrilled about seeing yarns from different parts of the world and, you know, trying it out. This is a novelty yarn and it will need a wonderful pattern or an or idea or a project to be, uh, to be used so that it really speaks and features its best qualities. So in the package, I got a letter. I read the letter. Thank you, Claptrap. Beautiful sentiment. And yes, I will think of something to use this yarn for. I uh, just need to figure out which which kind of statement piece that I want to make with it. And I won't share the, the note here on YouTube with what Claptrap has written me, but uh, the box did get a little damage and I have put the yarn in a canvas tote from Hobium, but it's not a Hobium yarn. Uh, this will be packed away because I probably won't get a chance to jump on it and use it in a statement piece, but uh, it will be shipped very, very delicately and in a plastic tote over to my new place that I'm moving to. But here is the yarn here. Now, we're not sure whether it will be still on sale or whether it was discontinued yarn, but it's from Wendy's and it's called Noir Chunky. So absolutely look at that wonderful shimmer in there. It is a mix of brown and I'm gonna say like a, a brown, a really dark chocolate brown color. And it does have a roving style from a thin which goes all the way down to a three and all the way up to a five so does row from thick to thin so a beautiful statement scarf or a cowl would work up really nice in this yarn uh let's have a look to see what i can tell you on the label so it is 100 grams in each of the balls and i got six of them i believe i will count them out and let you know so there's no 
color shade name, but it does give me a number here of 5420. And they are suggesting you can machine wash this on 30 degrees and you can cool tumble dry. So that's easy care instructions for you, really nice. So I have a recommendation here of knitting needle size of six and a half millimeters or a US number 10, I believe that's what number 10 is classified as, but no crochet hook measurement. So I think maybe if you go up maybe to a seven crochet hook or a seven and a half, that might actually work up well. So there are the details of the, the yarn. I don't know whether that's gonna focus. Maybe, maybe not. So this yarn is from West Yorkshire and I believe that's probably where they manufacture it as well. Mm, and in each ball you get approximately 210 yards, meters, sorry, 210 meters or 229 yards. And it is 80% acrylic and 16.5% wool. And I guess 3.5% uh, is Lorax. So that must be the golden thread that runs through there. Really, really nice. That's a great representation of the yarn there. Lovely, lovely. So I got one, two, three, four. Yeah, I did. I got six, five, and... <laughs> Six. Wow. It's really soft. I would say that there's no itch factor to it at all. You don't have to have an un any undergarments to wear this against your skin. So lovely, lovely yarn. Absolutely like that. I think maybe even, I think a statement scarf would be really good, like a big fat chunky uh, scarf because I have enough to do a big maybe seven footer. Yeah, really, really like that. Thank you so much for that, this lovely gift. Super happy about that. That looks after all of the yarny things that I've got to catch you up on. Works in progress are done and also finished objects and some happy mail, which I'm super, super stoked to have received. Uh, so I guess that leaves us just to talk about what I've been up to. So Hubby and I in amongst packing boxes we made one trip over to the island hiring or renting a van truck and we were able to manage to uh, pack in boxes from um, hubby's, his name's Chad, he's a teacher so we put some school supplies into the, into the van truck and we had lots of room left over so the only thing that we had packed or I had packed was my yarn so I packed in my yarn as well so I... <laughs> We drove across, traveled on a ferry up a highway, and then ended up at Chad's parents' place. That's where all of our stuff is in storage right now in their garage. So I had maybe around 10 boxes of yarn. I've got a photograph that I'm gonna insert somewhere here of where we had left uh, my babies of yarn in the garage over on the island. So they're there waiting. I have some yarn here that I have enough to play around with in the meantime until we do have that official big move in September. So uh, yeah, I kind of like don't know from what's at home still to what's in the garage over on the island, uh, but I'm really excited about getting uh, some space in our new home where I can put the yarn out so I can see what I have on shelving and when I'm working and crafting I can go in and pick the pieces that I want more easily than having to open each tub up separately when I'm creating something to see what I've got that goes well with a different color. I can then go and do a little bit of um, assessment and not spend as much time as what I have been doing in the past with uh, picking my yarns for projects. So I have to open so many boxes uh, currently. So I'm alleviating those issues. Um, the next thing that we did was we celebrated Pride here 
in Vancouver. Generally, our BC Day, which is uh, British Columbia's special day, we have a day off uh, and that fell last Monday. And we got together with some close friends who were having a beer tasting in their backyard. I have some footage of that, which I'll probably close with in this video of the beautiful setting that we were in on Sunday that just passed. Uh, we are doing some beer tasting and the hosts really decorated the yard very, very lovely with rainbow colors, rainbow streamers, balloons galore. And it was just a beautiful setting to uh, celebrate Pride. And one of the guests that were, were there, uh, his mother had generously uh, knitted up some uh, washcloths that I had used in the past year or two, maybe, no, it was about a year ago that I got one from uh, a mother of one of the, the guests and we used it up so much that it, uh, it actually went uh, holy after a while. So I got a new one. Isn't that lovely? So this is all the way from Saskatchewan. Uh, so thank you to the, the lovely knitter who knit this washcloth for us to use. Actually, it was for her son, but he had many of them. So he donated this one to me. So love, love this. We will absolutely use this washcloth. And uh, so, yeah, that day went really, really smashing. We had so much fun playing uh, a game. You may have heard of it. It's uh, called uh, the Splash Out. So there's a contraption with a timer on it. It's like an egg that you can separate made of plastic and you put a water balloon inside of it, uh, close it up, set the timer, and then the, the uh, whole thing goes over your head and someone picks a category where you have to state what it could be an answer, like a true answer to that category. And then they pass the piece over to the next person and they hold it above their head and they've got to pick a different answer to the category. And that goes on until uh, the timer goes off and <laughs> the uh, pin pricks the water balloon and then douses the person who happens to hold the ball above their head so the unfortunate person gets wet. We all got wet apart from two people uh, who I think, I don't think they cheated. I just think that they were very fortunate that it, it scooched by them uh, earlier on in the game, every round that it made. So uh, they didn't get wet. So two people didn't get wet and everyone else, I think there were six of us who got wet. I got, I got doused twice. So uh, yeah, it fell on me twice, um, but a lot of fun and what else did we do? I, we've been watching the Olympics, which is going on right now in Tokyo. And uh, we're using a channel where you can recap, watch the recaps of all of the highlights and see an event at any stage throughout the whole program, which is a lovely feature because in the past, if you had missed the, uh, the live taking or footage of it, uh, you got one chance to maybe watch a, re a repeat or a rerun, but then you couldn't see it any longer. Uh, so this is a great asset to have if you really like a sport and you want to maybe binge watch the sport. You can see it all the way through the heats to the finals. And uh, yeah, I'm super seeing everyone posting that Tom Daly, who is a synchronized diver, uh, he won gold for Great Britain. He's a knitter, so uh, I've been seeing lots of uh, TikTok. I've been seeing lots of repostings on uh, Instagram of him knitting while he's watching other people go through their heats. And um, congratulations, Tom Daly, for winning gold. Uh, what else did we do, have been up to? I think that catches you up on everything. If I've forgotten anything, I'll uh, leave it for the next podcast. I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe. 
if you're in uh, the Northern Hemisphere and you're experiencing a hot summer like we are, I'm hoping that everyone stays cool, that they have some sort of reprieve somewhere in front of an air conditioner uh, where we don't have that right now here in this apartment. And for the, those people who live in the sub, Southern Hemisphere enjoying their cooler climates right now, I uh, want to wish you all the best in your week and make sure that you have a good week. And I will catch up with you in the next episode. Bye for now.